You know what time it is. Hush, hush. So let us go to my most recent save. And let us continue on with hush, hush, now that we've saved Cassie. Um, so I think the only thing we have going on today is L's date, right? Yes. Let's talk to Sir Vex. Do my eyes deceive me? Or am I once more standing in the presence of true chivalry and heroicness? Yes, that is me. Welcome back, my friend. I'm eager to catch up and hear news of your adventures. And by adventures, I mean naked pictures. Yeah, I know. Just so we're clear, I'm working on being a better communicator. Before we check to see how your quest fares, I shall read from the blog of the Holy Socks, as is tradition. Yep. <clears throat> According to sex 6969, a knight mm -hmm. should be cautious before doing Whoa. Anything, Because it is written, only assholes do aim. Dirty joke right off the bat, damn. All right then. Let's see how much hentai you've collected and how much more may be hidden throughout the kingdom. Hmm? Astounding. It appears as though you've collected at least 45% of the hentai hidden in Sabrosia. What an achievement. Thank you. 45% is nearly halfway finished. But don't grow complacent. Much like full play of the phallus, the task is certain to get harder. Jesus Christ. But fear not. I feel that you are up to this task. Continue your search and return to me when you wish to check again. Farewell. I'm assuming all the pictures I've taken were clearly consensual. Um, did anyone text me about going anywhere? No, that's right. Cassie has somewhere to go. So we go to the cafe or the beach. We're going to the cafe. We need to up our stats. And I have a feeling I got to re-help Lotus flirt with Alice. Yep. Damn. Okay. Uh, coffee reference. <laughs> Let's just get past all this. Assertive generosity. Yep. Um, not for Dimitri. Uh, no need for reward. Nice. Just give me the fucking coffee and let me go on my way. Let's go to the cafe again. Get us another perk up. Gosh, how am I going to lift the water? Here you are. Have a great day. Oh god, I have to sneeze. Wait. <coughs> 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 I'm good, yep. yep. Well done. <laughs> you got yourself back to the mall however this time. It doesn't seem to be okay, we've already seen this. Charity kiosks. Set up about my everything. By three, hell yeah. So what are they all at? 54, 49, 48, 54, 49. Okay, we need to update Spav. Okay, we're gonna save here again. Because holy shit, I didn't know you could, your game could just end so suddenly. So let's just pick all the decisions we did before because I think that's gonna lead to an L secret. Either that or it's gonna lead to her death. Welcome. Fuck. Well, it's especially through. Court is beyond wow. description. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so many questions you didn't uh, for movie star. Fuck, my swab is at 60. Oh, well. Bring down everything <laughs> better. Yeah, it's like some squids. Nice. Choose two friends. <laughs> um, kind of like fish. Yes, we fish. Oh dear. Okay, we'll do that again. Yeah, oh, that'll be great. Sex edition. Shit, that one. Yes, I have. That doesn't surprise me. Do you want to make that with me? I know you think I am out. That just seems like the best one to go with. Delicately. Yeah, cool. Um. Like I said, you've been warned. Okay, maybe that's better. Um. That one. Oh, hello. Just because you're not out once again. Oh. <laughs> this is very weird and I don't like it. See ya. Okay, there we go. Is that a new picture? 
Now we gotta pray and hope that Fumi doesn't pop up at our apartment. Maybe I guess her place. Was that a new picture? No, it wasn't. Okay. Okay, she didn't. Immediately we're upgrading Suave. We need to get that one up. Okay, we are now in territories we have never explored before. Hey, it's Ilo. I can't tell you. Uh, you can tell. But I'm giggling. Listen, I don't know much time before Dorrington's back and yells at me some more. I just want to tell you that I had an amazing time. I feel just over the moon today. I've never had so much fun in my entire life. Anyway, I'll message you when it's safe again. Don't worry about me. Take care. My sweetheart. Okay, let's go teach Lotus how to flirt again. Using my queen bee, but it appears to be closed. There's a sentence that's gone fishing and rather swar swarmy fun. Another fun says no BRB in 15 minutes. There appears to be quite a few customers outside, rather annoyed that they can't get their morning coffee. What do you do? Come on, give a motivational speech. Something you're going to Shakespeare by the end of it. Many of them are cheering upon it. Oh my god. Hell yeah. Quill. Uh, deadass. Hey, second chance. Sunday the 21st. There also be a naughty cake. Got that. Evening of Sunday the 21st. Get back up. See you then. Just kidding, bring yourself. And the clothes you're wearing. Yeah. Let's go to the cafe, get another boost in stats. Hola, aloha. Hola, aloha, and hello. Welcome to the Queen Bean Coffee House. Your enthusiasm is just... Here you are. I say this every Have episode, but it's day. so infectious. Anyway, we're here once again going to save, because holy shit. We have ten more days left. Drop by the bakery, see that it's packed as usual. There's a line of people in the door waiting to get their sugar fix. If you get closer and see the line, it doesn't continue inside. In fact, the store looks empty. When you print the glass, you find Detective Fumi is there. Shit's the counter talking to Bonneville and wondering really if it's about something serious. That's when you spot a box of donuts in Bonneville's hand. It's like a casual conversation. Given that you and Detective Fumi aren't exactly on the same team, you said it would be best to avoid running into her. You give Bonneville's display a blissful look of baked bonbons, one last belonging look, then continue on your way. Let's go home and talk to... Talk to Quill. Everyone home, you notice that a few of your neighbors are looking towards your house. Oddly, it takes you a moment to realize there's barely loud music coming from inside. Quail, you give a little wave, mouthing word, oops, and quickly unlock the door. Once you're inside, you notice the distinct smell of laundry detergent filling the air. Your audio system is tuned up mags that's playing a song that sounds vaguely familiar. What's new, kitty cat? Woo! <laughs> you make your way through the house to the laundry room, where you find piles and piles of clothes all over the floor. Quill is sitting in front of the washing machine, watching the clothes go round and round. Anything good on? Go my nosh. Oh, it's you. Hello. Go my nosh. You're just in time. Please get undressed. What? I need more dirty clothes for the machine. I tried on everything you own, just to make Ew. this last one. And I don't like putting on your undies because they're not made for kitty tails. Okay, hurry. Uh, let's finish this plunging, then maybe we can wash the bed sheets or something. Maybe we fold this laundry first. Um. Hmm. Okay, I want to get Quill secret, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the chump thing of just saving right now. And we're going to do this one. Wait, did you say fold the laundry? Okay, now we're going to load back to this one, and we're going to see what, what it does. You can wash a bed in this machine? This machine is a friend. Okay, I, th I think I like the other one better. We're gonna go back and do the other one. <laughs> Wait, uh, please show me. <laughs> it took six basket loads, but you finally get all the laundry to bed. You cool helps by carrying a few socks, which he says are problematic. You start uh, sorting the chaos in manageable piles of light and darks, delicates. Cool creates her own pile of interesting laundry, which is frankly, thankfully not very large. As you begin the Herculean process of folding through roughly four weeks of clean laundry, it isn't long before you know it's cool watching you intently. Don't mind me. I just need to learn your secrets. If you could slow down a little and move your hands out of the way, I would really like that. Here, grab some socks. I'll teach you my secrets. Oh, yes. I'm so excited. Give me those socks. I promise not to chew on them anymore. What? The folding begins mostly quiet at first. Cool watches you fold a shirt. It seems particularly impressed when you fold the sleeve, turns the whole thing into a perfect square. She attempts to feed herself, but winds up mostly twisting into a hot dog shape. Oh, look at how much better mine turned out. Do you want me to show you how to do it this way? Sure. The trick is not to look at it while you're attacking it. Mm. Then, once you catch it with your claws, you squeeze it until it stops complaining. 
You might want to write these down. This is good advice for lots of other stuff, too. Like what? You continue folding laundry, though it isn't... No, it doesn't seem to be keeping Quill's attention. Several times her attention drifts away to something else in the room. She spends at least 20 minutes watching the ceiling fan and rubbing her face on a pillow. On my pillow. Jesus. Even when you're saying so when you say something to her, half the time she acts like she's lost in thought doesn't hear you. Finally, she stretches out on the bed, rolling in several stacks of folded laundry, arching her back and making a high-pitched whine of satisfaction. Several stacks fall over to the side of the bed, stumbling onto the floor. Toss a sock in the air. Whether it's a frustration or Capricornus, you toss a sock into the air. The sock hits the chandelier right and staying dramatically off course. The sock flies across the room, striking a speaker. The speaker falls over, catching a house and all the items fall to the floor with a loud crash. Quill screams. No! Quill rushes across the bed and buries her head in your lap. Oh no! The plant! He killed the plant! That plant was my friend! <laughs> Please don't let them get me! Please keep me safe! I need a protector. <laughs> You're the only one I've got. Oh, that's a bit sad. You spend a few minutes stroking Quill's hair, running your fingers to her oddly silky strands. Once she's calmed down enough, you rise from your seat and pick up the plan. After setting everything right, you sit back at the bed. Quill returns to you this time at the side of her, um, this time laying the side of her head on your lap. And you're safe, but I need to know, but I need to know what I'm protecting you from. You suck at folding laundry. Uh, yeah, I know. It's hard fighting monsters if no one else can see them. I told you that I saw something, something bad. But if I don't tell you what it looked like, you won't know if something dangerous comes to the door. It's just hard to remember. So somewhere easier, tell me how you made it feel. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, it made me feel. Mm -hmm. It gave me cold blood and a spiky tail. It made me feel like I was going to be killed. Yes, I know. I remember a dark alleyway. It smelled really interesting. Like, very oily and planty. Also pee. Yo. I was waiting for someone. And I heard them. And then... And then there was so much noise! And scariness! And horribleness! And badness! And get away! Uh, I'm here. What, what else did you want me to do? Pills a rabbit, rabbit, all the color drains were facing. You expected to bump from the room anyway. When her breathing says, she's going to stick several large breaths, trying to get herself under control. After ten minutes of committed petting and coaxing, she touches your hand and says, Okay, I'm okay to continue. And that's when I peeked. And I saw what I was afraid of. It was a person. person. Uh, I'm sorry. That's all I can remember. My heart is beating so fast. I feel like I need to be quiet now. So we'll shift her to a more comfortable position. Right away, Quill seems to be quite happy that you picked her up and her prayer return. <sighs> You maneuver her so you can lay down on the bed, further scattering your laundry piles. Then you gently pull her in. She curls up next to you, nuzzling her face to your chest and sides. After a short time, Quill starts to nuzzle you more. She rubs her face on your chest and digs fingers into your sides, simultaneously tickling and prickling them. Thank you again for helping me with my... Uh, everything. You're good people. I like you. And I trust you. It's easy being nice to a good kid. Yes, that makes sense. That's why some kitties get pets, and some get picked up by the scruff of their neck. Ow. Which you shouldn't do, by the way. That's a mama kitty thing. That is a mama kitty That's thing. Not for You're right. People. The funny thing is, even though you make me feel safe, being around you also makes my heart go faster. Here, feel. Quill sits up and takes her hand and places it between her breasts. Do you feel it? You make my heart go faster. I can't. <laughs> and I'm not afraid. I am also sort of a little afraid. Well, what the heck? Our hearts must be broken. Or maybe that's what they do when they're fixed. Maybe Second they one. need a snack. I have more questions. I have thought a lot, recently, about you touching me. What? I've been trying to figure out ways to trick you to pet me more. I like the feeling of your fingers in my hair. I like it when you rub my back. But the place I want you to pet me most... is down here. Every time I think You're not about pointing it, anywhere. I get very... I'm not sure why, but this is where I want you to pet me. She takes her hand and delicately slides it up her leg under her skirt. Oh, dear God. She gently presses your fingers against her underwear. She's indeed extremely warm, and there's a subtle moistness there as well. 
What is that face? What is this? Drool gas as you touch her. Pussycat. Oh my gosh, that feels so good. I had no idea it would feel like that. I want... I don't know. I want you. I want... Quill loses herself for a moment, squeezing one of your hands against her breast, and the other even harder against her clitoris. <sighs> you turn Quill onto her back and curl your fingers into uh, into the waistband of her skirt and underwear. You pull them off immediately. Here we go. Quill reaches above her, uh, her head and pulls off her shirt. Her breasts bounce free at one at a time, and she giggles happy and nervously when she's finally naked. Whoa! <laughs> As you're pulling off your own clothes, she leans back on the bed and begins rubbing the lips of her pussy for, uh, ferociously. Furiously. Jesus Christ. Her face blushes and begins to make the small yelps of pleasure and anticipation. Just as you return to her, she spreads herself open for you. Oh, yes. Please. Please have me. I want you to touch inside me. You gently grip her tail and are surprised when it comes out with a loud pop. The scent chasing causes Quill to moan in ec uh, ecstasy. You touch, suck, and kiss every inch of her body. She laughs every... Uh, every time she orgasms and depends more when her own mouth closes on your private, she can only last moments before orgasming herself. Was there something there? Almost after an hour, the two of you lying next to each other still panting. The quiet persists long enough that you're a little startled when Quill suddenly speaks. Thank you. That was neat. Can I have my tail back? Oh, you hand it back and Quill skips off to the bathroom, presumably to restore it. She leaves the room only to suddenly poke her head back in. Oh. I thought of something when your fingers were petting that special spot inside of me. <laughs> the person I saw. I had never seen him before. Him. And I had never smelled him before. I hadn't seen him because it was so dark. But he smelled really, really powerful. Powerfully bad. I don't think he had ever been near pee and garbage before. Yeah, that's it. Okay, bye. Was she kidnapped? Quill disappears inside. Did probably be shower before you continue with the day. Did we find was Quill kidnapped? Quill might have been kidnapped. You push the laundry off your bed, and your activities have generated at least another three loads for Quill. In the shower, you reflect on the last hour of your life. You can't quite come to any particular conclusion, but at least it was fun. Damn. Okay. Let's look at the, the picture. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. I, I mean, I don't know what to think of these pictures. They're kind of just there. Um, tech savvy. And suave. Okay, four out of five. Jesus. So I have an idea. Please let me think of a bad idea. Because, well, it sort of feels like a bad idea. Exactly what I want you to do. Come to my house this afternoon. I'm going to spend time with you alone. Does something fun Monday the 22nd. You can bring friends along. Uh, yeah, sure. My heart is racing with everything up, but again, you do what's not allowed. I want to break the rules. I step on this time, so drop by and remember if no one answers the door, I may have just fallen asleep. Don't give up, pretty please. See you on Monday the 22nd. That is literally today. Quill, purr. Hey, 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 you're a good human. I, you may feel really special, and I wanted to pet me like that again. Thank you for being such a good human. I'm the happiest kitty ever. Can't wait until next time. Bye bye. Hero? Um, so here's the part where I invite you on a date, like, we smooch and chunk. You never know. I'm free tonight if you are, honestly, the rest of the thing dice for me. Tonight. So I'll take you mean the evening. If only I could just... Oh, I can just grab it. I think I could do the evening, so I... Uh, disaster. Are you free dinner on the 23rd? Yes. I can do the 23rd. You gotta just go do my hair. You gotta press the yes, winery. Okay, so we're going to the winery with Casey. Tonight. Okay, I think that's good. July 22nd afternoon, July 23rd evening, July. Okay, we're good. So now it's the morning. We're gonna say once more after that whole extravaganza. We're gonna go home. As you're driving through town, you can unsick with check on Quill. You pull into the driveway and see the fence over the backyard that someone dug a massive horn to the lawn. You rush over and suddenly see him forcing Quill to dig her own grave, or worse, Quill forcing someone. You open the back gate and run through and see Quill holding some sort oh, of box. Hello. Hi. Do you mind carrying this inside? 
It's mine. Good question. Uh, this is some kind of shallow grave, is it? No, but if you want to repurpose it, I won't object. Quickly, let's get inside. The box doesn't like getting wet. Uh, okay, you help Quill carry the box inside. She even wipes her paws on the welcome mat before sitting down on the chair in the living room. All right. She has the box suspiciously, reverently. She seems quite taken with it. I know what you're thinking. This box doesn't have Quill's name on it. How can it be hers? Wasn't thinking that. Very rude of you to think that. But I like you a lot, so it's okay. But I would like you to note that my name could be written on the inside. It could be, but I, I want to know what's on the inside. Let's assume it's true. What, what's In on the inside? Case, it's only one of the very interesting things inside this box. Can I open it? So we need to get in there. Yeah. So we can convince that stuff to come out here, where we are. Yeah. What's are in you it? Following? I'm following. You're not moving past as easy. Yeah, yes, Good I'm following. Point. I go really slow when I sit down. I guess you could say it stops me in my tracks. I'm pretty sure I know where the key is, but it's in the hardest place a key could ever possibly oh, this be. Is like a lock box. If you can oh, help fuck. me guess where it is and help me open the box, I'll share what's inside with you. Okay, do it. Use your brain. You get one guess. Okay, I only get one guess, so we're saving and loading. Yes! Okay. Oh, good job! You're it's, a smart It's kitty. in the box. So how are we supposed to- So now that we know where the key is, do you think we can open it? I think so. You cautious to grab both sides of the box, then making sure you have a tight grip. Then you twist and pull with all your strength. This causes the lock to fail and break the box wide open. Causing money to go flying every- What Wee, the fuck? Fun. Cool pause with the bills as they float to the ground which you, while you look inside the box. Inside you find taped to the inside a small plushy mouse and a word quill scrawled to the box. Hey, it is under name. <laughs> you free the mouse and hand the quill. Oh good! Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. you can have the rest. This is what I thought I smelled in here. Okay. Bye! Uh, bye. Quill qu qu leaves before you can ask any questions, so instead you gather up the money and count it. There's tax and grand! Dang, Grant! Okay, let's just go to Elle's house. I probably should have saved before going on, but whatever. Actually, I think I can I just save right now. Okay, we're just gonna save right now. If you haven't asked us, there's a suspicious number of birds watching you. They might not be watching you, but on the other hand, they might be. For a brief moment, you consider what long-term effects of being exposed to a kitty girl in your house might be. But you do your best to push those concerns down. Sure enough, he's blowing at Elle's driveway. You can see her by the front sidewalk, talking to birds. I thought that was a picture. You see her with hands right speaking happily the tree in the front yard with several birds looking down at her. You then briefly consider if she's talking to the tree. Shaking the thought from your head, you climb out of your car and slowly approach Elle, a little perplexed by the coincidence. She gives you the big she gives you a big smile as you approach, but but puts fingers to her mouth indicating to stay quiet. Hello. Sorry, I'll be with you in just a moment. I think I finally made progress with Sweet Pea. Elle turns back to the birds and whistles softly. When she speaks, her voice is even softer and more airy than usual. That's right. It's an extra special day today. I brought company to watch you. I think, given all the circumstances, you should definitely give flying a try today. That big blue sky could use a few more feathers, and yours are just lovely. Won't you give it a try? One of the birds ruffles its feathers and wobbles its head back and forth in what can be described as a seriously committed headbang. Then the bird takes off from the branch. You watch in amazement as the bird flies down to the fence post nearest Al, landing for just a moment before flapping back into the air, flutter just in front of Al. Pure's made me enjoy light up in Al's face. Yes! You did it! You did it! There's a moment where you almost expect the bird to land on Al's hand, perhaps to break into song, before it flutters a little further away and flies back up to the tree. Then it settles back down and resumes its bird-like nonchalance. Elle jumps for joy, clapping her hands gently together. Oh, did you see? Sweet Pea did it! Ah, oh, I'm so proud. I've been coming out here every day and encouraging him. I have all these little bird feeders out, see? But I okay. never see him using them. I was worried he was a late bloomer and too afraid to fly. But he gave it his all, and look what happened. Yay! I especially love all the little birds in that tree, in particular, because my grandmother planted it when she was young. We no. call it our family tree. <laughs> oh my word, I got so caught up in the moment, I haven't offered you a beverage or to take your coat or anything. 
Well, would you care to come inside? Uh, I mean, if I was stuck in a tree, you would come to encourage me to jump, you know? <laughs> Don't be you know silly. I mean? You shouldn't jump off trees. You're not a bird. Yeah, that's right, I'm a free bird, bitch. But if you were a bird, I would be happy to feed you sunflower seeds and encourage your flying. I bet you'd be a wonderful bird. Why, thank you. Elle hooks her arm in yours and hugs your elbow as you walk together. She looks up at the birds and sighs. I'm sure a lot of people look up at birds and desire very much to be one. To be free to fly wherever you want. But every time I think about it, I get a little nervous, to be honest. Imagine a poor bird with narcolepsy. Ugh. Sometimes I fall asleep on my walks. Can you imagine a poor bird falling asleep while flying? So, I'm content to give them seeds and let them do the flying for me. At least for now. I think birds better stop bragging about their flying powers. I'm supposed to stop pooping on my car. <laughs> oh, stop. You'll be nice. Admittedly, I also have some reservations about the bird bathroom situation. But then taking shit. But we brag about so much stuff. Let the birds have one thing we can't. They have flying. As you reach the front door to Elle's house, she pauses, stopping in her tracks and staring at the door quietly. For a moment, you wonder if she's having a spell and falling asleep. But a deep sigh signals she's just considering something. Doors, I mean, what the heck, right? <laughs> Elle's eyes meet yours and she smiles. I usually think they're pretty adorable. I've never had someone over before. Mm. By yourselves, I mean. Just family, servants, service people. I see. I've never been alone in my house with someone before. That should prove once more. This is fucked. I feel a little overwhelmed. You're the boss, you're Elle, it's your choice, what happens next? Elle's eyes uh, shimmer with gratitude, she hugs your arm a little tighter. Yes, it is. Let's go inside. Walking inside overwhelming pinkness of... The fuck? Who the hell's that? Whatever. Uh, the overwhelming pinkness of the room strikes you right away. Well, also, which one is at 60? Okay, Carson's motivation. Motivation is a lot higher than the other ones, Jesus. The pink currents, pink furniture, there are strawberry throw pillows and magenta curtains. The unmistakable smell of cookies and tea fills the room. Your eye catches a negligee in the corner, likely hung to dry and temporarily forgot about. Here we are. My house. Your house. You'll have to forgive the decor. The interior decorator my family hired took a few of the themes a bit too far. Yeah, I can see that. But please, make yourself at home. Can I interest you in any cookies or afternoon tea? Don't worry, the cookies are from Bonnabelle's. Yush! That freshly baked smell is an air freshener I use. I feel a bit deceitful about it, actually. <laughs> nah, now if you buy air fresheners that smell like freshly cooked steak, you might have a problem. Wonderful! I'll go fetch them. I got out the fine china for today. I hope you enjoy tea parties. Sure. <laughs> I honestly adore them. I've even thought about getting a cat, just so I could have some company for one. No. I'll be right back. Al returns with a tray of cookies, tea cups, and a tea bottle. <clears throat> Jesus, my throat. She gently pours you each a cup and sets your cookie on its own saucer. <laughs> she hums a soft melody to herself as she does. Her loveliness is hard to ignore. Okay, I'm gonna hit a save state here, and I'm going to. This one. Oh, I didn't, did I? I'm sorry. Then we just unlock the secret. Gosh, I've been thinking about it so much, I forgot that I hadn't really talked to anyone about it. Oh, I don't even have any of her secrets. So each girl has five secrets. Okay. Cassie, Hero. Oh, wait, I got secret too? Father's a cop. And then L, L, I don't have any for you. So Quill, I have one. Mio, I have two. Cassie, I have one. Euro, I have two. L, I have none. So, so let's get this one. After Dorian told everyone to leave, he practically dragged me into our family's private room. He was furious. 
I don't think I've ever seen him so angry in all my life. But to be fair, I don't think anyone has ever embarrassed him so much either. So he probably had every right to be angry. You know, particularly I can't about say it. that I am. Which is interesting, because I have a long habit of doing my best to make sure Dorian doesn't get mad at me. As you know, I had been drinking. Due to the bad influence of my date, I'm sure you're aware. <laughs> hey! And Dorian screamed and yelled at me for the better part of half an hour. But every time he got mad, I started laughing. For the first time, he seemed so... silly. Like I had made a mime upset, or a party clown. And the more I laughed, the more upset he got. Until he just gave up. He tried to send me home, but I told him I was going to go get cheeseburgers instead. What? Oh, I've been meaning to ask you. I don't have any experience drinking. Does getting drunk make you crave junk food? I mean, when you do it all well enough, you're not sure, but I often find wrappers and pizza boxes in funny spots, so... Yes, that's what I thought. Okay, good. Because I've been mostly forbidden from eating those kinds of food, and I thought it was peculiar that I wanted to eat them so badly. Anyway, a long story short... I haven't spoken to Dorian since. I think it might be for the best. And I feel pretty happy about it. For the first time since I can remember, I don't feel worried about checking in with him or being worried he'll disapprove of what I'm doing. It's a good feeling. Thank you for helping make it happen. My pleasure. And mine. I'll smile shyly at you and blush as she strains her skirt for a lack of something else to do with her hands. Elle reaches over and picks up a cup of tea. Here you are. I hope you like English tea, because... Elle is interrupted as she catches her foot on the leg of a coffee table. Oh. She drops the cup and saucer into your lap, and your crotch is introduced to the five filling fresh English oh, tea. Oh no! Oh no! I'm so sorry! Elle grabs the tea towel and begins to pat that in your crotch. You pull away, but the close quarters of the couch make it impossible to dodge. Elle squeezes and pats your crotch for three entire seconds and realizes what she's doing. You quickly take the towel from her and continue to cl the cloth-based fondling on your own, and Elle quickly gets her to her feet and cries. <laughs> Elle begins to cry. Shit. She runs from the room and hands covering her face. The door closes, and you can hear her sobbing in the next room. Luckily, English tea involves a healthy dose of milk, and temperature on your privates can be best described as comfortably warm rather than scolding junk. You do your best to dry yourself, but there was a surprising amount in the teacup. Also, two lumps of sugar means they're already getting sticky. Over to where Elle, the smear knocks softly. You can hear Elle sobbing. Please go! <laughs> So okay, nervous. I can already tell that that is not, that is going to end up getting her killed. Last time that happened, Cassie got killed. So, mm. You seem happier than usual. You know, I think I feel a little happier today. Lots of things have been changing since Dorian's birthday. After Dorian told everyone to leave, okay. he, he was fear. So he probably had every right to be angry. I can't. Which is interesting, as you do to the end, but every for the first, like I, and the more, until he, he tried to, oh, junk food? Yes, okay, because, anyway, and I, for, it's a good thank you for helping make it happen. Who's alcohol? <laughs> Just get, I know you mean, here you are. Oh. Shit. Oh. Please, I mean, Oh wait, no, oh wait, you're not slow, you're just so clumsy, you're beautiful, wonderful, clumsy. Oh, okay, never mind. Maybe we're good, actually. I suppose. <laughs> Maybe we're good, oh, actually. Three isn't too bad. Sorry, I just needed a few moments. Okay, never mind, we're good. When the thing you fear most will happen happens, it can really get you down. Once again, that got really real. Oh dear, look at your pants. I didn't burn you, did I? This isn't very clearly I wet myself. I think you didn't try to much attention to it. I'll stare at you in a blank silence for a moment. <laughs> she scrunches her nose and giggles loudly. She puts her hand on. She puts a hand. She puts her hand on your face and 
coy embarrassment. My word. You are so wonderfully bizarre and interesting. Yeah, I pissed myself. Where does one like you even come from, I wonder? We should throw those into the wash, just so you're not marinating in tea. You mean piss. Hold on. I'll see if there's something I can give you to cover yourself. There you go. <laughs> Elle disappears for a short time searching her house, but she returns empty-handed. I'm afraid I don't have much for pants that will fit you. Here, come here. What are we- where, what? It might be best if you just wrap a blanket around yourself while I wash your clothes. Yeah, that seems best. Here, sit here on the bed and get under the covers and take your pants off. If this was an a laboratory, I'm gonna have words with you. On a laboratory, I'm gonna, I never thought you'd ask. Um, okay, thank you. Going for Lab the time. I don't get what you mean. But I'm sure it's very funny. It, it was very funny in post. <laughs> Elle smiles as he turns her back so you can change. You remove your profession personal effects from your pockets. Uh, hand her pants and underwear. As Elle leaves to throw them in the wash, you wrap a blanket around yourself. It's satin and it feels kind of amazing. Uh, Elle returns and sits on a bench in the seat of the footer bed. So, I suppose we should continue our small talk? Yeah. It feels like that was hours ago. I feel almost out of breath. Where should the conversation go from here? Are these sheets satin? They feel amazing. Oh, uh, yes they are. And yes, I know. Sometimes when I feel like I should treat myself, I go to sleep without my pajamas. Mmm, I see. <laughs> Do you mind if we talk about private things? No, There's sure. so many things I want to talk about with you, but they're all... My family would call them inappropriate. Mm -hmm. and I'm terrible at making friends, and I'm awful at conversation, and I don't know how to bring things up like this, and... Mr. Raspberry is sitting closest, you hang precariously close, seeking permission. Elle hesitates for a moment, she pulls back. But then she leans in slowly as well and kisses Let's go! The two of you softly make out for almost a minute. You gingerly open your mouth and coax your delicate tongue uh, from her and cox your delicate tongue. When you, finish, when you finish, you lean away and look at her. She stares at you with dreamy expression and smiles. I... I think you're okay with private feelings. Yeah, you can trust me. Yeah. I want to ask you some things, but first, I would like you to ask me whatever you want. Whatever I want. It'll help me decide what to ask you, so... Ask me whatever you're comfortable answering. Just to warn you, though, I may chicken out. I'll try not to, though. This is now the Try Not To Embarrass L Challenge. How large are your breasts? Are you a virgin? Oh my, very much so. Okay. Until I met you, I had never really even kissed anyone. Mm-hmm. My family impressed upon me to wait until marriage. This is just getting weird. Oh, I, uh... Sure. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm Damn, that so works. Flustered. I touch myself in the shower sometimes. Not very often, but sometimes. So far, so good. I feel confident. Oh, Intimate fantasy. Oh, this one is... Uh, this one is sort of fun. Well, I mean, I don't think it's embarrassing. I think it's sort of intimate. Makes sense. But, you know, I, that's why I said intimate. See, because of my narcolepsy, I can't really take baths. Yeah. There's a chance that if I spend any amount of time in one, I could fall asleep and drown. But I want very badly to take one so bad that I have fantasized a solution. Someday, I want to take a bath with someone. I want them to get in first, and I want to sit on their lap. And they would wrap their arms around me, I would feel them underneath me, and they would kiss me and touch me, suck on me. Whoa. And I couldn't even stop them if I wanted, because I'm completely helpless. What? And they explore and pleasure themselves with me. And if I fell asleep... They would hold me and keep me safe. Okay. And kiss me in my sleep. <sighs> Elsa sighs there off into the distance as she sighs a long and lustful sigh. That would be heaven for me. Okay. I would like...
would like to ask you some questions Hit me. now. Hit me. If that's okay with you. Uh, yeah, ask me anything. Okay, I will. I'm excited. <laughs> Are you a virgin? In spirit. <laughs> I I don't think that counts. Fuck. But who am I to say? How many people I'm have we fucked? Fully versed on how to Cassie, do it myself. Eli. Oh, we didn't really. Did we really fuck Eli? I don't think we did. Cassie, Alpha, Quill, Eero. Four. Four. I might have accidentally had sex sometime and wasn't aware of it. So next question. Do you think I'm attractive? Sadly, you did. Like, I know you think I'm pretty, but... I mean, like, do you think I'm sexy? Confidence is sexy L, and the way you are there now is very close to my back. Really? Do you mean that? I... Sure. I've never felt that way about myself. I have no idea what you see in me, but I... I'm very happy you feel that way. Okay, last question. Are you seeing anyone else right now? I mean, are there other girls or guys that you're with? I tell you, but if it's doubt in your mind, then once you know it, don't feed it, you're better than that. Oh, you're right. I give a lot of attention to my doubts and fears. And that question, are them being hungry? There are better questions to ask. Yes. Sorry, I know those questions are odd, but I've been so sheltered all my life. I feel like I've been in a birdcage, a round one with no hiding spots, hanging in the middle of the room. Damn. And every moment I spend with you, I feel that cage open just a bit. All this time we've spent together, it's meant so much to me. Everything about you is so alluring to me. You make me want to pull pranks on my brother. To drink wine. To drink beer. To mix them together and drink them anyway. The last few weeks, I've wanted to wear mismatched socks. <laughs> okay. I want to wear red underwear and pretty bras that show too much. Every single thing that my family has controlled about me, I want to smash it and throw it in the bin. You have made me excited and hopeful and power. My family oh, would never let me date. And now, I want to choose who I love. I want to choose who I'm with. I want you. So, will you go steady with me? What's the right expression? Just going. You lean over and begin to kiss her. She raises her hands and softly places them on your cheek. Our kisses grow more and more passionate as she hesitantly begins to French kiss you. There's an innocent awkwardness to it. Every moment you feel she doesn't quite know what to do with her hands, or her tongue, or with yours. Then she slowly leans back and lies down, pulling you gently on top of her so she can uh, press you against her. Her hands rub your back, her legs spread open to pull you onto her. She pulls back for a moment. Is this okay? Are you enjoying this? She allows you to answer her question by kissing her. She sighs and makes soft moaning sounds of pleasure. Uh, okay. Not too bad. Everything about her is soft. You press yourself against her. Her, or her enormous breast. You feel the warm nap of her woe. <laughs> Na not nap. A nape of her pussy <laughs> caressing you. Finally, Elle stops to catch her breath. She gently touches your cheek. I want, I want to make love with you. I want you to be my first. You sit up for a moment, sliding back, and the two of you pull her skirt off. You take off her shirt. Elle takes your hand for a moment and says, I think I might... Listen, if, if I fall asleep, you can keep... You can keep going, if you want to. No. And if... Uh... Suddenly, Elle gets a distant look. Her eyes become immediately drowsy, and she falls asleep. You sit back for a moment, and you're not sure what to do. 
You start by gently tickling her rib, her foot, sure enough she doesn't rouse, cause arouse. You're not sure how long until she wakes. What do you do? Search her house for any clues? You quietly get up from the bed and begin to search her house. Thank God, by the way, the option to just go for it wasn't there. Because that, that would just be fucked up. You picture the house yields several things of note, but you're not sure you have time to check them all. In her bedroom, you can find her diary laying on a stack of papers marked urgent and confidential. In the living room, you find a safe behind a picture frame. It looks decently high-tech, but doable. What do you do? As quietly and delicate as you can, you remove the papers from her diary laying in the drawer and sit to read them. You quickly scan her diary to see if there's anything too important to read or impair. There are apparently a lot of recent entries about you. Some talk about how kind and interesting you are. Some talk about how nice you're at. Oh, wow. There's one entry that just has the word sex and marriage underlined. Most of the earlier entries before you came seem to be unimportant. Elle complains about Dorian a few times and a few praise Bonneville's cookies. There's one entry that describes a dream Elle had where she and Bonneville had sex. She seems to have liked it, but found it confusing. The diary goes back a year, so you move on to the papers. Inside the sealed folder, you find a number of medical records that appear to be related to Elle's narcolepsy. It seems Elle has taken a number of different medications to manage her symptoms, which is also a number of specialists. You find a referral to one doctor to another, apparently, with a slightly different uh, specialty. The also among these doctors apparently comes to be for more psychological assessment. It's from when Elle was very young, only five or six years old. At the top of this report, it says, In concurrence with reported symptoms and details unearthed during psychological evaluation, is con conclusion of the span of the patient. Read Eleanor, suffers from type 1... Not from type 1, but type 2 narcolepsy. Symptoms are consistent with severe neurological trauma and resulted from a blow to the head. It is the opinion of this panel that the step-sibling, which indicated the injury in Reed, Reed Dorian, should be temporarily removed from habiting the same situation as patient Reed Eleanor. Additional notes, trauma is consistent with blunt force trauma. The instrument was likely a hammer or a baseball bat. You slide the papers aside and see another report underneath. Although E. Reed and D. Reed are not blood siblings, they seem to share strong familial bond. Frequency of D. Reed's behavioral incidents have decreased by half since then. By half since. Just then, Elle begins to stir. You quickly return the documents to the folder and place them in your drawer. Replace them in the drawer. Uh, sit down to Elle before she comes to. For a moment, Elle is confused. Her eyes dart around and blinks, unseeing. Then recognition returns to her and she smiles and whispers. You waited. And she begins to kiss you again. And again, Elle starts to become more and more excited, and before long, she guides your hand into her panties. Your fingers softly caress the very tip of her clean as she suddenly gasps. Wait! She's panting, you give her a moment to catch her breath. If we keep going, we're going to have sex. Why is this manipulation? I'll take a moment to get her bearings. I'm sorry. I'm so nervous. Can we stop? Uh, yeah, I think so. Thank you. Ellie's back and cuddles into you. Thank you for stopping. I thought I was ready. I just need a little more time. You and Elle hesitantly come together and lay with one another, a little unsure for a long while. Time passes in a blur. Once Elle has fallen asleep, you quietly head out the front door. Outside, it's begun to rain. The birds are all gone from their branches, hidden now. The drive back home feels a bit angsty, but otherwise fine. I'll say that went well. Uh, that went well. Inside with me, it was it was so wonderful. You're so caring and amazing. I wish you were here holding me. Cheers, smile, and ever together. And I assume we can see each other soon. I'm ready. I'm ready to. Well, we'll find out, won't we? I'm head over here for you. I can't wait to see you again. Part of Part of Okay. We got a secret image. Let's see what that was. Did not expect that from L. I can tell you that much. The fact that her first image was so fine, and then that one. Ugh, okay, um, let's go meet up with Eero. It's a quiet night as you're driving to the restaurant. Um, there's a weird humidity in the air, but the breeze of the ocean is strangely cold. A few drops of water on your windshield suggest the weather might have secret plans for you, but for now, the clouds stay silent. As you round the corner, a car passes in the opposite lane. You catch a glance in your rearview mirror of the car doing a 180 turn and following you. You get a bad feeling, you turn down the side of the road just to see if they're following you. And it does. The car takes the same turn and seems to increase speed. You hit the gas, looking for a good place to turn back, when suddenly see flat- Oh, it's, it's booming. The car behind you, it turns out, is a ghost car. It blares its sounds only for a moment, but keeps its light on. 
You pull over on the shoulder and wait for the police car to pull up behind you, but the cops don't exit the car for a long time. Finally, after almost five minutes with the police car looming behind you, you see the doors open, out steps Fumi, and also an officer in a much fancier uniform than you expected. You only get a split second to look at the officer before, sh uh, before he taps your window, and the man is much obviously older than Fumi and of Asian ancestry. His name says S. Kawa. Oh, no. Good evening. Do you know why I pulled you over? Good evening, officer. I have no idea. It's a small legal matter. I'm sure we can clear it up. Take a look back there. You see my partner? Yeah, what about Fumi? That's Detective Sway Honda. Sway Honda, yeah, what about her? I understand the two of you know one another. We are very well acquainted, yes. Yeah. That's my understanding, too. All right. Just a couple Picture. of quick questions. And we'll get you on your way. Yes, yeah, what is it? Do you know a young woman by the name of Cassie Caprice? I see. I should have saved before in. That girl could use some friends with her best interests at heart. She had a rough past. I'd hate to see her life turn upside down again. You must be pretty popular with the ladies around town, yes? According to witnesses, you've been seen around town with one Mio Faro. Oh, and also our city's most eligible millionaire, El Reed. Are uh, both of these women friends of yours, too? Yeah, I know them. Oh, I would hope you know them. I don't know about you, Detective Sway Honda, but I don't tend to make out with strangers. What? I have made recent exceptions, sir. What? But for the most part, your point is clear. Recent exceptions? What? I don't need to know that. I know a woman by the name of Miss Arison Desori Kitagawa. Allison? And are you aware that she and Mr. Kasi Caprice oh, are involved Alice. in the transport and distribution of illegal narcotics? That's quite the accusation. About 10 miles per hour. There's, there's around a $100 fine, yeah? In Tramony. I'll take that as a soft invocation of your Fifth Amendment rights. Yes. Listen carefully. I'll lay it all out for you. You're on your way to a date. Yes? You're meeting a Miss Irokawase tonight. Is that correct? Yeah. Good. Honesty. That's what I like to see. Thank you. I've got witnesses that put you around town with Miss Caprice. What about Cassie? As well as some interesting security footage from the mall. What did I do at the mall? I've also gotten some first hand accounts that you've been seeing, Miss Kawase. Who, who told Apparently, you this? The two of you are quite intimate. Who told you this? Ring a bell. More than just one song of the whole bell time. Your hero's father. Why, yes. That's right. Nice to meet you. Apparently you disapproved of Eli. Which I'm not, I'm not, I'm not okay with, man. Generally, we're more careful with this information. But I feel like maybe it'll help you make the right decision here tonight. Miss Caprice is a CI, a criminal informant. She's helping us with a case, a big one. Wrote a big fish in her net. Yeah, from what she's told me, Jesus. Maybe you're close to getting scooped in that net. Maybe you're not. Pretty close. But here's what I know for sure. Starting tonight. You're going to stay away from my daughter. What does that have to do with anything? You're going to break things off with her. Let her down gently. And you're going to leave town. Or I'm going to bring Miss Caprice in. Hit her with trafficking. Grand larceny. Break and enter. Possession with intent to distribute. It's a long list. Maybe a few things fall onto you too. Good. That's good. I was hoping that's how you would see it. Officer Kawase looks at Detective Fumi and nods. We're done here. He turns to leave and Fumi sticks her head into the passenger window. She, she says sternly. I'll be watching you. C come on, Fumi. It's 
стороны. Эй! I saw you pulling in. I was doing laps around the block to kill time. Mm -hmm. So, how are you doing? Uh, even I've been better. Than I got. I had a weird encounter with a cop. You look great. <laughs> yeah, sure. Don't even pretend that what I'm wearing matches or whatever. One problem with rainbow hair: it's hard putting together a matching ensemble. Combine that with riding leathers and a boss helmet, and I make Eli cry every time I leave the house. But you know, whatever. They're just clothes. They won't serve us without them. So do what you gotta do. Yeah, do what we gotta do. Anyway, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Here, reaches over her hand. Take her hand. Hero smiles and sticks her tongue out of you. She gently swings her arm as the two of you walk inside. Inside the restaurant, the atmosphere is, almost, is intimate and warm. Live music is playing somewhere, and the smell of garlic and butter fills the room. The monster Diddy takes your name and immediately instructs you to follow them to your table. Hero follows you, but her eyes are wandering around the rest of the room, taking it in. Wow. You know, oh. I've never eaten here before. I'm more of a kale salad at home kind of gal. Mm. Mm, everything looks expensive. I'm sure they have kale. They're probably fancy kale. Aren't you telling me about it? I, can bring you. I know they told me I couldn't bring you, but I insisted. Alright, but I'm warning you now. I already decided that today was a cheat day, so I might be a bit pricier than you were expecting. I got 16k in the bank. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> oh, do you think they have caviar? I don't know what it is, but I've always wanted to try some. Probably. After the two of you are seated, you notice that Iro is staring at you with a dreamy smile. When you look back, there's a moment where she just smiles and grows a little bash. She blushes and laughs nervously to herself. <laughs> hey, so... There's something I've been wanting to talk to you about. About the other day, at the beach house. I've been thinking about the sound you make when you're like, whoa... It was fun. Oh, wow. That's not doing it justice. Well, it was can... mind-blowing. It was like not eating Literally. all day and coming home to the smell of bread baking. I didn't realize how hungry I was. How much I needed... Well, how much I needed that thing you did with your tongue. <laughs> Damn it, I should have mentioned the thing with my tongue. And I need to ask you. Did you want... More? I mean, do you want to be more than friends? I, I got a picture so you can feel she gets a surge of adrenaline because she reaches over and squeezes your hand with surprising strength. Ow. I want you so badly. God, I leave in literally nine days. I know that when summer ends, you'll be heading home. But other than my brother, there's nothing holding me here in Sabrosa. I've always dreamed of packing up everything on my motorcycle and hitting the open road. Okay. So maybe when the summer's over, maybe I come with you. And it might work, and it might not, and... whatever. But I'm excited to try. What do you say? Do you want to see where this goes? <laughs> oh my gosh, my heart is racing! Okay, we this got four crazy, hearts right? already, guys. This is crazy! I'm so on board crazy! Here gets up from her seat and walks to your side. She cradles your face and kisses you, your chin resting on her breasts. She smells like mango and kiwi. You raise your arms around her waist and feel a muscle tone of her shoulder blades. Jesus. You know what? Screw dinner. Let's go back to my place. Hey, already? Jesus. You know, both grab your things from the table and leave the restaurant. Damn, already? She takes you by the hand back to your car, standing between it and her motorcycle. She drops her jacket and Tama begins kissing you with desperate, urgent need. She runs her fingers through your hair, pulling your head pulling your head to her neck. and uh, You kiss and nibble her, her hands cradling you. Your hands curling your teeth. <sighs> I want you so bad. I have a feeling there's a certain officer nearby, so I'm gonna do Come that. Come with me to my place. I want to make love with you. And it's the most intimate anyone's ever been yet. You're kissing girls more passionate. Your hands squeeze your breasts. Your hands slides down. Your pants begin to touch you. We are not at your place yet. Just stand in the corner. You see a police car in the far end of the parking lot flashing its lights. Shit. One sec. Oh, it's Eli. One moment. Here's the twin answer. Eli, hi! What is it? I'm just in the middle of... What? Wait, slow down. What's wrong with that? Okay, hold on. I'll be right there. I'm not that far from the hospital. He's not at the hospital. It's the phone. I think you guys are riding here. Sorry, I don't know what's going on, but Eli says something's wrong with our dad. 
I'd have to run right now. Brain check? Yeah, of course. Okay, I'll call you once I know what's going on. Eli is always mixing stuff up. It's probably nothing, but I need to make sure. Uh huh. Later. Uh, Take care. It's, it's, yeah. Sweet cheeks. It's me, Masuna. Cops came and picked me up, and a whole lot of serious shit is going down. Um, I'm probably not gonna see you again, so. Fuck. Just... Damn, that's really sad. Told them you didn't have anything to do with anything. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I messed up everything. It was never gonna work out for me. But <laughs> thank you for trying. Oh my god, uh. I'll never forget you. Bad restaurant date ending. The radius is good, they're gonna lose some points by the truth of so you free. Okay, so I, I kinda have to. Kinda have to not do that shit with Ira, okay. Come with, I wanna make. Shit. Fuck! Oh, Why'd I save okay. here? One moment. Officer, just let me go. Whatever little game you're up. The concert. Now tell me you understand. Or here's where things begin to go bad. Good. We're. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to just. Night. Shh. <laughs> It's crazy. Okay, um... I'm g the only time I'm gonna bring it up is when it says this. What? What did you say? Are you joking? You can't say something like that to me. I'm sorry. She kicks up and drives off. You get back in the car and drive home. I, I ended it! I ended it! I ended it! Okay, apparently I have to do it a lot sooner. Oh, blah. Cup suck. I had one pull me over once because I didn't have my seatbelt on. Bear in mind, I was on a motorcycle. I'm glad you made it, though. Anyway? No. Uh, I'm gonna have to hesitate. Oh my god, I don't know, I don't know what this- God, what do you want me to do here, man? No. God, I, I can't remember. What did you say? My there you go. There we go, there we go, there we go. There we go. Okay, okay, we're saving, we're saving, we're saving, we're saving, we're saving, we're saving, we're saving. We're saving. We're saving. And you're just- I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to. <laughs> A burning rage comes at your eyes as she stands up and slams her palms at the table. The other restaurant patrons, uh, fuck! Well, here's a little piece of information you need to know about my father. Since you're just doing what he wants anyway. I don't want to! I tried the other way and it fucked me up! I hate my father! I hate him too! He's my fucked! My father is a cruel, heartless, selfish son of a bitch! You, you don't need to yell. He's only ever brought me misery! I agree with you, don't worry, but Jesus. Like, please. It's all his fault. Damn. All the worst things in my life are his fault. And I never want to hear from either of you ever again. <laughs> Ow. Jesus. And uh, that was good? What do you mean that was good? Oh, I I need to have a word with that fucking cop, man. Oh, I want to kill him so badly. I might just I might just rank up violence just so I can fucking put an end to him. Holy shit! <sighs> Fuck, I feel bad. Oh my god. Damn, I that hit home. 
that hit way close. Okay, okay, okay. We need to get this shit done. We need to make this shit up. The okay, I already saved. We need to shit up. The okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, we need that. We need. Mm. I'm only gonna do that once, and we're gonna see. We're gonna see where it takes me. Hey, it's me. Listen about the other night. Things are really cool. I'm sorry, but I'm sorry to say, except for the punching part. I'm sorry about that. Really sorry. I was out of line. But everything else, we need some time to sort of thing. Please don't try to find me. I need time alone. Bye. Fuck. L, help me out here. Sorry, let's go down this morning. The umbrella trying to cross the Let's go me at the park. Umbrella's being up too. So right now, okay. So, fuck, man. What do you want me to do? If I go any other way, I get a game over! Just- uh, I have 50%. That's boobs. Great. All right, then. Hmm? Magnificent. I'm 60%. Okay, whatever. Then, I need to fix this now. Is there the park you still see Elle waiting? Park man, she's trailing once more to Provost when she's easy food. Hello, good afternoon. I'm so happy you had time for a walk today. <sighs> Okay. Apparently Fumi has dates and I don't even know it. The company is rather wonderful. I find it's quite challenging having an engaging conversation with just yourself. True. Also, people tend to stare. <laughs> How are you today? Uh, working without a place, walking without a place to go is neato. I'm doing well, so That's good to hear. Shall we walk? Or stroll? I think I would prefer stroll. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Elle bends her elbow, offering you to take it. You, you hook her arm in her, she hugs you tightly to herself for a moment. Do you stroll to the park for a short while, talking mostly about the weather and how it's best during a tropical storm. When you're in the corner, you see Dimitri from the coffee shop handling out free coffee samples. Ah, my friends. Please Dimitri. come to me. Bring me your happy faces, for I would like to pour coffee in them. Yes, pour coffee <laughs> straight into my mouth. Hello, Dimitri. How are you today? Yeah, how are you, Dimitri? Oh, Miss L, I am so wonderful. Don't you and fucking even dare. even more so now that you have strolled in my path. But wait, what is this? Perhaps Dimitri is interrupting a special moment. The two of you, you are, how do we say, uh -huh. lovers? Elle suddenly freezes into her eyes and she actually grips your arm tighter, but you see the color drain from her face, clearly embarrassed. Oh, um, well, you see, Dimitri. Now Elle's face turns a bright shade of red and seems to grow redder with each moment. Uh, Lover's Paps is a bit strong. Oh, Are you alright, Miss Elle? You appear to be uh, ripe. That's a funny way of saying it. I, uh, that is, we are. We haven't had. But I want to, except. My is motivation so fucking high. Really catch Elle before her eyes roll back and she faints. Oh dear. Miss Elle, hold on. I shall call the- uh, No, no, no. No, it's narcolepsy. Oh, uh, uh. So apparently in order to go through that scene, I need to have my suave up. I can't even get my suave up that high. Am I gonna have to like bail on her for this? I guess it's not really a date, so I guess yeah, I'll bear I guess I have to. No, I literally have no other choice. I have to go. Fuck, it didn't mean to do that. Help the company. Fuck. <laughs> oh my Fuck, what do you want me to do? How do I just amp my amp my suave up? I can only amp it up to 59. I can't amp it up more than that. If I can amp it up one more time, that'd actually be pretty fucking useful. Okay, we might this might be the first time in the entire series. We might have to speak to the fortune teller. Because I have no clue.
Beg your pardon? Just sneaking by. Hello? Grant C. Handsome in a wizard's robe. Thanks, friend. Well then, have a seat. I'm sure you have questions. Y you for real? More or less. I mean, please don't ask me for lotto numbers or who wins the World Series in 2024 or anything. The man leans forward and whispers. Go Giants. In any case, I was expecting you. We'll see. But I also was really jonesing for a latte. Hence the sign. Oh yeah. My name is Will, by the Will. way. Will. But you can call me Mystic if you prefer. I'll call you Whimsical. I used to call this little business Where There's a Will. But it didn't really bring in the tourism dollars. Yeah, I wonder why. So I changed it to Mystic's Mystical Fortune Telling. And things are a lot more lucrative now. No one wants their palm read by Will. Everyone. But I, okay, I don't, don't get any chances to work. No thought you might just... So I run like my journey here was... And when I arrived, so now, I peek. And I can tell you a few things that may you know be... Oh, yes. Those two try to pull me into the game a few times. But luckily, here's the point. You're trying to learn for a reasonable fee. Cross your problem with Actually, silver? Actually, I take all... Except American Express. Their service fees are atrocious. The more I do it, the harder... And I'm holding a... What do you say? Do it. A wise joy? All right. Mio's first secret is no pain in the neck. She'll tell the first soul that's savvy in tech. Yeah, I know that. And there you go. That was it. Do you know? Should best cheer. I need suave. Okay, how do I amp up Suave literally one more time? Okay, apparently, am I re really gonna have to go, like, further back in the game? That's good. Oh, dear. Uh, so I, I literally need to go back further in the game. We'll go here. Back before we go with Eero. Okay, so is it, do I still have? If I go to contacts, do I still have her secret, or is that like a no-no anymore? Not it's still no-no. Oh my god, her current mood is bad. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to go before we even made the date with her, which I don't even know when that was. Was it here? Might have been here. Never mind. Okay, we're gonna have to load back even further. Actually, no, wait, hold on. What do I trust? I could do something else. If I go... If I go... here, right before Elle's date... This is also before everything with Quill. Um, then I should... Okay, so we're, we're gonna have to look at all this again, sorry. Okay, now we're at night, so now I can upgrade my Suave twice. Okay, now it's at 56, so I just need to upgrade it a few more times. Uh, Monday the 22nd in the afternoon, yes. So now, actually, I should be able to just redo Quill. Not Quill, Eero. Say another time. Maybe that'll help. Dinner on the 23rd. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, so we're gonna go... We'll go downtown this time. Here we go. Oh shit. Uh, baby boy, guess interaction CC quickly. Hey, can't talk. Got a chase. Do it. Nice to see ya. 
Okay, boom. That's all we need to do. No, we gotta do the whole thing with L again. Load, please. Thank you. Uh, I burn, burn, I pissed myself. Okay, there we go. That one's done. So this is the part where I would be heading to Eero, but we skipped that and we decided to do it a different day. Hopefully then we can get Cassie's dead out of the way. Teenagers, we're gonna look to you, don't you surprise the best our kids. It says Crush Rush, which just appears to be a dating sim. What do you do? Oh, play Crush Crush. Oh, it gave me a bunch of stats? Oh, hell yeah. Can I see what the... Ooh, hell yeah, baby. Then give me uh, five to each. No! This is good. Listen closely. Can you explain to me why a girl no! rides a sports bike over a motorcycle no! with no experience, thus ensuring her demise? I want to kill you. There we go. Okay, now we gotta witness this heartbreak a moment again. We are once again going to save. Just to be sure. Suave's up to 60, okay, so I don't need to do that one. Wait, I need it up to 65, don't I? Fuck, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need it up to 65. So doing Suave things gets me one Suave point, so if I can get one Suave point. Okay, so I literally have to do both of these into Suave. There we go. Okay. I'm sorry, hero. I, I wish I could change things, but your father's a fucking asshole. Okay, let's go to the park. Let's meet up with L. Do the thing again. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Boom. There we go. Okay, I kind of had to do that. Let's go to the cafe. I'm gonna end it after to this episode, after this day. You've done last time for the final exam. Okay, one well, last lesson. The final exam. The final exam. Yes, haha. <laughs> this will be our finest hour. Could not be more true. All right, here is what Dimitri is thinking. There is a certain customer that comes in every week mm -hmm. at a certain time. She is. Oh no. How do you say? Very prickly. No! You're not talking about Liliana! I thought, I thought he was talking about me for a second. Dimitri, she hates me! She hates everyone! She's she does. She's wood and cold! Yes. The last time I mentioned her eyes were like moonlight in the starry sky. She threatened to kick my cojones up there too. She is fire. She is passion. She is also she a bitch. Is also a she is. I hate she her. She's perfect for your final challenge. Dimitri, there's no way I can flirt with someone like that. She's likely to make me cry. And I hate crying while I'm at work. I feel like everyone does. Do not worry, dear sister. If she turns up the meanness, That's your movie tester. I shall step in and throw her out. No one will speak to my sister this way. Oh, well, okay. Okay, you got this, Lotus. You got my back, Dimitri. Give it a go. Yes, excellent. Let's seduce the crap out of this fiery lass. The game is a Oh god. Okay. We need only wait. Fifteen minutes. Then she will be here. She is like clockwork. She is like clockwork. Yeah. She only comes in when it's super quiet. I guess she likes solitude. Alright. We lay the trap, we wait. I saw the video on the TV, man. Sure enough, 50 minutes later, beautiful intense girl. I, I know who Lilani is. Hola, hello, aloha. Uh, I mean, welcome to the Queen Bean. Hey, give me a double shot Americano. Absolutely. Can I interest you in a dessert? No, just a drink. Be quick. Oh, uh, okay. Uh. This is the only one so far that I've been, like, so unsure of. Dimitri will get your drink. So, um, I couldn't uh, help but I, I, notice. I, 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 what? Your abs are just incredible. Like, truly remarkable. Like, I could stare at them all day. Shit. Well, I'm serious, though, this is crazy. Are you messed? Oh, 
No, I just. Um. Um. Dimitri will get your drink, and today it'll be on the house. Wow. Oh, ah, uh, I sometimes like to buy a drink for customers when they, you know, catch my eye. And what exactly do you mean by that? Is he bringing the sweat? Just I see. Well, <laughs> yes. My bad. Looking a gift horse in the mouth for no damn reason. Thanks, but I'd prefer to pay. So what's the damage? Excuse me? Sorry? What do I owe you? How much is the coffee? Oh, sorry. Double shot Americano. That'll be five dollars. Here. Tosses the bill under the counter. Dimitri begins making the espresso, giving you a worried look that you're running out of time. Then I takes your phone and begins looking through the messages. Lotus always gives you a quick look to say, what now? This is another one I'm very unsure of. So we're once again gonna save. So, for your cup, can I get your preferred name? Why? There's no one else in here. And number? Is that a line? Yes. I think you're incredibly attractive and I've always Maybe. wanted to ask you out for some time. So, I just wanted to take a shot. Please don't be mad. Nah, I'm not mad. Conf you're cute, but I'm not interested. Just put L on the cup. I think I made a mistake. Hey, um, while Dimitri is getting our drink, can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Is there anything I can do to... There Make we go, your day better? Come on, come on, come on. What the hell are you talking no. about? It's just that you come in here a lot and I think you're beautiful and oh, interesting oh, oh, oh. and She's mysterious. Blushing. Honestly, I probably bit up a little crush on you. But you always seem so... out of sorts. I'm not sure. I don't want to pry, but I thought maybe I'll ask if I can help. Maybe we can grab a drink sometime? Come on, come on, come on. Or give me, give me the sparkle chat? sound. Listen, that's awfully sweet of you. Normally, I would punch any prick who tried to get into my business. But you seem truly, honestly nice, so I'm giving you a pass. The kinds of problems I got, you can't help with. And a girl like you, you don't want to get mixed up with a girl like me. Thanks for the offer. I can tell you've got a good heart, and a body I wouldn't mind pinning to a bed for some fun. Oh. But let's keep this professional. Okay. Thank you for telling me all that. Yeah. Yes. Here you are. A double shot Americano. Made with loving hands. Great. Dimitri hands the cup to, to Lotus, who turns it to Lani while giving you one last look for an input. Once again, I don't know. Wow, this is insane. Lotus nuts. Okay, here. Just a sec. Lotus grabs a pen. Uh, you don't. Lotus writes her own name and number and then plants a kiss on the top. So Here's lipstick. my number. Just in case you change your mind. Have a great day, Liliana. All right. Cool. Don't hold your breath, though. Later. Yes. Okay. I'll push the river back down the street. If you want to sound speech, you speak. Sweet melody, that was intense. That would be funny to see. I almost speed a little, but Lotus, you did so good. I did, didn't I? Yeah. She didn't threaten or yell at me. She didn't tell me she was gonna slap my boobs off or whatever. Uh huh. It was exceptional. You truly have become a master yes. of the fine art of flirting. That was actually fun. I didn't feel too scared. Even though I was sure she was going to reject me at any moment. What worse. Yeah. Thank you, you two. I actually do feel like I've learned a lot. Even just being brave enough to blur something out can sometimes work. I have never been so proud of you. Except that time you won that spelling bee. Dimitri, 
I was five years old back then. Fair. Yes, and the word fuchsia is oh my very God. hard to spell. I agree with him on this. Never mind. Holy Goodness shit. Gracious, Dimitri. Fuchsia? Yeah, no, I can see that being hard for a five year old to spell. Just that I have no idea what I was doing. The student has become the master. Take a bow, Lotus. Take a bow. Lotus does a courtesy, and the two of them laugh together for a few moments. Oh, I almost forgot. Let me get you your coffee. But here you are. A cup of my super bro supreme. Thank you. Thank you one last time, my You're friend. welcome, Dimitri and I Lotus. Never seen I had a lot of fun. I in my sister. Surely you have helped her level up her love stat. And you've helped level up my stats quite a bit. With the Supreme Bruce Supreme. <laughs> but thanks again. Having you drop in all this month has been fun and terrifying. The big best mix. Just like love. Yeah. Come see us again. Will but do. No more lessons. That last was one. the last one. At long last, my sister. I okay. Let's get ready for the rush, Dimitri. Today I shall do the impossible. I shall clean the box. Oh. oh! You know that's my least favorite job. Yes, you have earned not having to scrub the toilets today. Take care, my friend. See you again. Bye. You step outside and take a sip of Sprite and Rude did like no other. You said to help first, but Lana, let's go. <laughs> Hey, doing stream tonight. If you don't know what to like, watch just someone on stream if you want to see me. Here we go. Winery. Cassie. State number four. You drive to the mall to pick up Cassie after she insisted last minute that she needed to get her hair done. Luckily, it's not very busy, and you find a loading zone to park in temporarily while you wait for her. Surprisingly, she steps out of the front entrance just as you pull up, and for a moment, you don't recognize her. Obviously somewhat self-conscious, Cassie walks over to the car with her hands folded in front of her. She looks amazing. Good evening. Are you the carriage I sent for? Beautiful as always, but breathtaking in particular. Oh gosh, you're gonna make me blush. Smash the point. You really know how to make a girl feel wanted. You know that? Well, I'm starved. It's been a coffee and gummy bear kind of day. I need protein stat! <laughs> the drive out to the winery is pleasant, although the weather has been rainy recently. Today, the air is calm and brisk. Cassie puts on a few songs she wants you to listen to and sings along a lot of classic rock and trashy pop songs. At one point, she leans way, way over to smell your cheek. To smell your cheek, then she comments your dream and gives you smooch. She finds this particularly funny and laughs for the last six or seven minutes of the drive. When you arrive at the winery, it's much more chill than usual. There are no fancy parties and small restaurants set up tables throughout the, uh, the vineyard for extra ambience. Wow. As you're escorted to your table, Cassie appears nervous. Good lord, look at this place tonight. I've got everything all fancy tonight. Oh, look at the lights. Hey, listen, um, I just wanted to say thanks for taking me out again. I know our last date had its bumps, but you're a real trooper for sticking with me. Well, I feel like sometimes I sort of put that to the test. But I yeah, promise fine. to be on my best behavior, so that you'll take me out to even more fancy places. The two of you sit and waiter pours each some wine. You can tell Cassie is somewhat uncomfortable as she fidgets and puts pulls at her own hair. She knows that you, you noticing her stop, she immediately has a sheepish look. I'm sorry, I'm just so worried about doing something what? No. wrong. Or saying something rude. No. When I was really young, my Nona took me out to a real fancy place. Uh oh. Secret. I could order anything I wanted. So I decided to order pizza. Because, you know, pizza, pizza. is fucking great. Fair. But when I said it, she gasped super loud and the waiter laughed at me. What? And then they both gave me lectures on how that's not the kind of food you order at fancy places. Fuck them. The other night, when I joked about ordering cheeseburgers, well, that was my sorry attempt to be charming and mischievous. And it worked. I swear I'm developing a complex now. Fancy places make me nervous. Don't be nervous, you're beautiful, sharp, brushless, and utterly charming. Cassie goes quiet for a moment and sort of blood, a soft blush coming to her cheeks. You notice she twirls her hair a little and looks away, bashful look you've really never seen before. What are you trying to do to me over here? You're gonna make me blush redder than a radish! Jeez, Alu. You're. You're sweet. You know what's serious when they use Jeez, Alu. 
I'd better make with some small talk before I hyperventilate or something. I noticed you didn't acquire your dress tonight as usual. <laughs> Are you maybe observing that I wasn't a complete piece of trash just before our date started? Uh, what, what? Well, thanks for noticing. I've been trying to clean up my act a bit. Get off the naughty list. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm doing it to impress someone. I'm hoping they find me more attractive and do things with me in bed. See this eye? It's winking. I'm winking at you. <laughs> by the way, by the way, I know some more that you're. I'm actually still looking. Cassie pulls her menu over her mouth, looking around to see if anyone heard you before pointing out an accusing finger at you. You behave yourself. You're supposed to look more quietly. How do you look quietly? Although I would like to point out that this is an awful window shop. I'm only expecting you to get your fingerprints on the glass later. That's a good line. Holy shit. Now behave yourself. Hmm, I wonder if they have good Prosecco here. Uh, I, I don't like any of these questions. I don't want to ask any of these questions. Hmm. Okay, good. No. I mean, I could ask you the same. No. Just in case you meant for, like, the sexy private stuff. It's not like that at all. My place is just, well, I feel like it maybe tells a little bit too much about me. Hard to deny you're not trashy when you bring people back to your trashness, you know. The waiter returns and then take your order. Cassie immediately becomes more nervous, pulling out her hair again. Got this girl. Cassie looks over at you seemingly in surprise. She lets out a chuckle and rolls her shoulders, trying to relieve tension. You place your order and Cassie takes a deep breath. Um, beg your pardon, sir. I'm, I'm not very good at reading French. But some of this looks more Italian than French, so. Now I'm second guessing what I'm reading. Can you tell me what the Neapolitan Margarita Esposito is? The waiter tells her it's a flatbread margarita. Mar Mark here. I don't fucking know how to pronounce anything. Prepared in a wood fire oven in uh, Naples tradition. It's, it's a fancy piece. <gasps> Cassie looks to her menu for a moment, then suddenly she bursts into laughter. <laughs> Jesus. You look surprised and somewhat stunned. They look to you, bringing a roaring laugh. Oh, yeah, the waiter fits a little comfortably what you do to finish. Before she finished, Cassie raises her and spot walks over to you. Nothing so hard to place her in a normal breath. When she reaches the sofa, she can injure you. Because your fingers reach the manicured crust the side of your head and kiss off a uh, warm, fully life. Finally, after her bending, she's back in suit. Oh, God, I can't believe it. Oh, Fancy pizza. Pardon, good sir. That was a bit of an inside joke. I would very much like to order your fancy pizza. Uh, yeah, whatever that was. The waiter smiles broadly, writes it down, and reminds you that the vineyard is for joy and romance. He scoots off and Cassie raises her glass. joy and romance, I guess. Here's to you. I'm back at you, sweet cheeks. Thank you. Dinner goes well and Cassie raves over the fancy pizza and calls it God's, God's gift to the world. At one point, soft music begins to play on the speakers hidden in the vines. Cassie sighs happily. Junk I've ever seen, and I want to have the full experience. Oh, rise and extend your fucking hand, baby. I'm wearing two left heels. I got two left hands and two left feet. Let's go. If I step I up, suck at dancing. Heels sharp. They're going straight through. Fuck. You and Cassie stand cheek to cheek and dance. The song is soft and slow. The fabric of Cassie just feels unworldly in your hands. This is, this is so nice. This is really nice. Turning me soft. And I'm letting you. I didn't do anything else, just nice to a pretty girl. Oh. That just proves my point. How was someone not supposed to fall for someone else when that's the way they talk to them? Cassie goes quiet for a while, and you catch out of the corner of your eye that she's holding a side gaze as you dance. After a few moments, she's just as considering to say something, she whispers something. I tell you. Story. You can tell me anything. Because I want to tell you something. Music. Never told anyone. Okay, hold on. 
the music had loud. The house I grew up in wasn't a happy place. I won't bore you with too many details. This is reminding me of the really sad FNAF music, and it, I just got like a wave went over me. Holy shit. and my stepdad was a drinker. Don't worry, he didn't put his hands on me or nothing. Thank God. He sure didn't like me. Even when I was seven, I was full of fire and brimstone, and I let him have it. We used to scream at each other so late and so long that the cops would drop by to break it up. Our nearest neighbors were almost a thousand feet from us. We were loud! Anyway, I started getting into trouble in and out of school. Started skipping school. Started hanging around bad people. And my stepdad, well, he had had enough. He kicked me out. I spit in his face and he clocked me good. Jesus. I had a black eye for a month. But I gave him one too before I ran off. So as far as I'm concerned, I came out ahead in that fight. No, it doesn't. It doesn't even compare. Anyway, I was out on my ass with no money, no place, no nothing. So I left the boonies and came to town, looking for a place to go. And that's when I met Mel. Mel found me in a bus station, stealing quarters out of the candy machines, and... Chasing off the animals, offering me five dollars for a good time. She took me in and fed me pizza. It was good pizza. But who's Mal? Kind of stale, but you know, pizza. Mel was older than me. I think she was forty, but she lived on the streets and did her best to help anyone she could stay warm and dry. She was good people. Getting to that part. I bunked at Mel's place for almost four years. She made sure I never ended up in some loose menagerie or doing hard drugs under the overpass for an escape. She was my fucking guardian angel. And one day, there was a lump right here. Because he pokes you in the chest just beneath your left nipple. And then my guardian angel got really sick. And then Mel needed a whole lot of help. See, that lump wasn't what you'd call the OG cancer. It was part of a gang. The rest, pelvis, rib. Things went from bad to worse real fast. And just the ride to the hospital alone took all the money she had. And she was just about making up her mind not to fight it. When I told her not to worry, if she fought, I'd fight too. If she hung in there, I would figure out the money. I would look after her, I would take care of her, and make her soup, and change her fucking diapers if I needed to. Because I loved her so much. So I did. I found the money, and got a house already, put ramps in and bars near the toilet and everything. Cassie's yeah, ups her a moment. A wild and desperate sadness flutters inside of her and suddenly pours out in a sob. And then she fucking died anyway! <laughs> she died! Only five weeks later! Her hair didn't even fall out! I already had wigs for her to wear! And she was just gone! <laughs> I 
didn't even see her that day. I couldn't stand the battle one night. Cassie sobs into her chest for a while, her whole body shuddering with the effort. Oh, oh God, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was gonna... <clears throat> I haven't cried about this in years. I didn't expect it all to come back and hit so hard. But uh, I've never told another person all this out loud. Anyway, I was left without anywhere to go and a pretty big bill to settle. The hospital was going to return a bunch of it, but... Then they would have looked into where it came from in the first place, and... Well, I didn't get the money from no guardian angel, I'll tell you that. You got it from your current employers? Yeah, you got it. Bit of a... I get paid first, work later, sort of arrangement. I owe a lot of money to these people, and I can't skip town or else... Well, let's just say they have their own way of collecting debt. I just wanted you to know, I trust you, and I guess, wanted you to know what was going on, why I made some of my decisions, you know? I play stupid games, win stupid prizes, I guess. And if you think any less of me for any of this, I hope maybe seeing more of the picture will explain some of it. I just needed someone to tell. You're just a charming person who decided to drop into my life like an angel. Cassie leans against your shoulder again. The two of you dance a while longer. After a long dance in each other's arms, a new song pops in a bit of swing, wakes Cassie from a dreamy stupor. Oh, whoa! Look at the time! We've been awkwardly making circles for a while now. I should get home. I've got a meeting tonight. An important one. Can we split? You bet. I'll settle up. Awesome. I'll meet you at the car. I've got to check my makeup. Cassie's quiet for most of our home. She stares at the window and at the sky, which has become once more quiet, as the forecast mentioned. It's gonna be a bad storm this year. I get this feeling in my knees. The worse it is, the worse the storm will be. I'm gonna be one wise-ass witch living in the woods someday. I promise you that. When you arrive at her place, the apartment, an apartment above the pizzeria, Cassie looks at you with a strange expression and sadness and desire. She leans over in a car seat and kisses you. She rubs the side of her thumb along your jawline, and for a moment, she's your entire world. When she finishes, she looks at you and smiles, when, and then she frowns. <laughs> it might be best for us to break up. Look, I know. I know how it sounds. Tonight was incredible. Literally one of the best nights of my life. But things are getting hot on my end. The people I work for. They're taking a closer look at the people around us. And I'm afraid there's some stuff they're gonna find out about me that'll make me unemployable. Everyone is not in the game. There's a good chance of getting hurt. And I don't want that. I can't stand the thought of you getting hurt. So, I want you to know how I feel. And then I want you to walk away. Don't let me in this game. I'm not leaving. No! No way I'm letting you throw all the good stuff in your life away. Listen to it's me. It's already gone. I had You're nothing good. a good person. I had nothing. You stupid life while I'm living. I, I, I got money. I, I know it's I messed up shit. And now I'm paying. I know it's not all of it, but still. It's only bad people who hurt me. Bad people and desperate people. And you're neither of those things. Well, desperate. Fits the bill a little bit too much. Don't be stupid. Just say goodbye to me. Kiss me and let's be done with it. Like I'm gonna save here. Cassie pulls away to resist your kiss, utterly furious that you would kiss her at a time like this. So you slip your arm around her waist and keep the awkwardness rolling as you predicted in a moment she melts and kisses you back. In fact, a few dreamy moments, her kiss becomes rather passionate and a take me on yours vibe. But a moment later, she finally pulls away and says, God damn you. All right. But only because I think that maybe I can't be just like you. 
Cassie pushes you as far as she can, being seen next to you. You think as though you might tackle her while she's distracted. All right, um, I need you to know that this was the worst decision of my life. But I'm not going to stop you from making it. I just want you to know. I don't think it's worth it. For me. But I'll let you make the decision. Go home. Think about it. Side you want in. Cassie types a message to her phone and pops up on yours. Call to this address in two hours. Just know that you get to do things if you want to join. And I don't know how bad they'll be about it. Let's see in two hours. Think about it. I'll don't think about come it. looking all sexy and dressed down. I'll see you soon. You go home and change to prepare. Will is there playing with the uh, cord of the kitchen blinds. She seems happy. You decide to take most of the cor uh, cards out of your wall and pack a knife. I'm, I'm not sure if it's a good idea to put a, or a bad idea, probably both. After enough time passed, Cassie gave you. During the drive, the rain comes. No one can tell us like this the next time it's vlog for Sendo. As though the time is selective and angry at the world, lashing out mad as hell and then going quiet. You cross several train tracks to reach your destination. The back of your mind makes a wrong side of the tracks joke, and you don't find it particularly funny. Finally, at a place setting that comes into view. It's a large, foreboding warehouse, obviously abandoned. Even as you step out of your car, you can hear the sounds coming from inside, music yelling. You walk up cautiously to look inside. It's kicking good looking. Alice's voice startles you. You even play a little more than you're comfortable with in reply. So, I wasn't really expecting this to happen. Cassie's been saying you're neat meat. That you want to join the family business and make a name for yourself. I didn't say that. I want to get her out of this kind of shit. True. True enough, I, I guess. Well, tell me. Did Cassie tell you that she considers this the worst decision of her life? Did she happen to mention that, were it not for an unfortunate and untimely closure of the strip club I used to work at, I would also have avoided this line of work like the plague? I... And trying to get her out of it. And did she mention that there are no health or dental benefits? I didn't think there were. If none of that scares you away, then follow me. Kind of have to do this shit now, don't I? Alice brings you to the warehouse where you see a group of delinquents hanging out. Most of them are smoking, hanging out on a couch, and nearby table you see Lilani talking to someone with several rolls of money in front of her. Cassie's with Lilani, leaning behind her in a jacket cap. She's a bit of a trophy around here. Cassie, I mean. All the kids have a thing for her, but they're more afraid of Liliana. Liliana, keep calling her Liliana. They learn pretty quick not to mix business and pleasure. Though they don't know it, but Cassie can take care of herself. I wouldn't be here if, if she could do it on her own. What are they going to make me do? It's a bit different for everyone. I mean, they probably won't make you do what I did. Which was mostly a bunch of math involving drug cutting. <laughs> I think Liliana is going to ask you to have sex with her or anything, but just brace yourself. You're seen as a bit of a threat. Am yeah, I? That moment, Liliana finishes up with the person you're talking to, and Cassie taps her on the shoulder. Cassie points you out, and Liliana nods. The two of them walk over together, Cassie making no outward expression, Liliana looking very much like a line about to strike. So, you're the stranger. Wants it to you, bitch. I've seen you around. Yeah, you talked to me at that party. Cassie tells me you want to get paid. Not what she I meant. She says you know how to keep your mouth shut. I guess I do. And you can fight. Is all that right? Ma'am? Hmm. I don't believe you. I know a bitch when I see you. Fuck you. Let's find out if I'm wrong. We gotta make sure you're not a cop. Test is a little different for everyone. I was told. Pretty straightforward. Dan, come here. What? One of the delinquents walks over. You recognize them from your first date at the mall with Cassie. Hey, I know this bitch. Shut up. Yeah, I know you too, Dan bitch. Dan is also new. He just joined last week. He also turned 17 last week. Mm -hmm. I want you two to fight. Whoever wins moves on to the next round. Fuck, I don't. I didn't put anything. What? But I already. You know what? Fuck it. You want me to beat the shit out of this punk? That's a big fuck yeah from me. He's just a kid. Yeah. That's why it's illegal. Make it happen. Don, Dan circles you, rest next to side, cracking it to listen up. That I owe you this from a few weeks ago. You're gonna bleed, bitch. 
Grapple Dan, yeah, hell yeah. As Dan comes to you with a bunch, you duck lower and tackle him. At first, he laughs, bringing up his fist down your back, widening his stance to avoid falling. And you execute a perfect suplex. You slam down on the ground, arching your back to the fullest before you can recover. You maneuver him into the rear <laughs> naked choke. He tries to pull your arm away, but he's no match for your strength. He taps your arm for a second, then quickly loses consciousness. You release before doing any permanent damage. Nice moves. Thank you. Step two is easy. Liana snaps her fingers and one of the other delinquents carefully hands her a syringe. Do you know what this is? That's heroin. That's yeah, mud. Take it. Stick him. What? She points down at Dan. Got it. Oh, I gotta stick him? Uh, I can't give the kid a fucking monster. <laughs> You're a fucking monster, you know that? Fuck it. All ready members of the game react with shock and surprise. Cast be gas and along with shock for a moment. Hmm. Respect, stranger. But that's going to make this next part a lot harder. Bring it, bitch. Okay, last step. Fight me. I'll fight you. Do it, and you're in. Oh, man. This isn't necessary. That H is gonna mess with them too much. You never know. Might help. Let's go. Ready? No, I didn't mean hit skip. Save once more. Fight as best you can. Wait for Lana to swing, and you manage to dodge her attack. You see frustration flare across her expression. She swings again, but you're already swinging in your uppercut. You catch her on the chin, you actually manage to lift her off the ground with the force of your blow. A weaker chin and she could have fallen unconscious. But Lelania laughs. Hey, that's a good hit. You're pretty good. But I told you. She hits you, but you barely matters. The drugs have already done their work. You fall and everything goes dark. You awaken suddenly in a cold sweat. You hear quickly hear Cassie's voice. It's okay. I'm here. The ground, you're in your room and it's dark. Cassie's undressed, she was sleeping next to you. You ask what happened and Cassie has to from it. Are we in my house? Oh wait, that's Quill's cat. Cassie gently presses you to the bed. You feel her naked body curl up next to yours, her delicate breast pressing to your side, and the feeling brings you to pleasure and comfort. You fall asleep again, you can hear the storm pattering outside, and the sound of her is back to sleep and almost instantly. Cassie is gone by the time you awake, several hours later. I don't know if that was rank A, but I'm gonna end it here. I've been going for two hours. Um, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will, uh, actually, hold on, wait, real quick. Look at the image. Here it is. Oh, 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 that's kinky. That's really kinky. Yeah. Well, like, I saw one with... Okay, maybe I'm wrong. What was the secret image I got for Talk with Fumi? Anyway, hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.